Jonah Carey joins us from Grantland.com. Always good to have you on the show. Jonah, how you doing? I'm good, Bruce. How are you? I read your piece today, and um, I mentioned it to the viewers when I came on the air. Uh, and let me just, um, Major League Baseball season preview, Jonah wrote that as far as Las Vegas casinos putting posting their over under as far as wins, the Indians number is 78.5 and Jonah writes bet the over, bet it hard. I love it. I'm flattered. I just hope you're not jinxing us. And I've done this before, Bruce. I've been on the show in years past. I said, oh, I love the Indians this year. For whatever reason, it hasn't worked out. So if, if this doesn't work out this time, then when you have me back next season, I'm going to say the Indians are the worst team in baseball. But, um, no, it's, it's a good club. I like the construction of the roster. I think Ubaldo Jimenez, a full season of him, you're going to see that he's a pretty good pitcher. I have my doubts that he's going to get back to what he was in 2010, which I wrote about in the piece, unless he really rediscovers. He used to average 96 miles an hour on the fastball. That didn't happen last year. It was down to 93 and change. It made him not quite as effective a pitcher, but he's still a big strikeout guy, still puts the ball on the ground. I could be very effective. And the guy that I think it could be a big breakout player this year is Carlos Santana. And he's already a very good player. And it's not like he's a secret to Indians fans. But I think we're not just talking about a good player. I think he could be a borderline MVP candidate if it really comes through for him. Because he's got experience in not just being a power hitter, but in being a guy who can hit for average, walks more than he strikes out. And I think all that is in his toolbox. He's got a chance to consolidate it. And now that he's 26 years old, you could see it happen sooner rather than later. Do you anticipate, how many games do you anticipate? This is a a ridiculous question in a way, because who can predict it? But I'm talking about size more, Jonah. I have I have reservations. I mean, this guy's knees. I mean, uh, if he goes down again, I look at our you know lack of depth in the outfield. I think that's certainly a concern. I mean, you talk about Carrara and guys like that. They're not the answer, certainly, as an everyday type of player. Right. Here's the thing about Sizemore. Even if he plays every day, which would be great, of course, for the team, you're not getting the gritty Sizemore of old. I mean, even if he hits the way that he did or comes close to that, he's not as fast as he was. He doesn't play defense like he used to. A, he's three years older. B, his knees are, are you know, not in great shape. So there's that to consider. But can he be a, a useful complementary player? Oh, of course he can. I mean, there's a reason they brought him back. One year, $5 million could turn out to be a big bargain. And so it's worth the risk, but certainly depth is a concern. They didn't really address it. I mean, listen, even Brantley, Brantley's a fine little player. But again, if he's your everyday left fielder, that's really not a lot of power coming out of that spot. Right. The outfield is not necessarily the strength of that club. And I said that even though I believe Chu will have a nice comeback season. What about uh, Esdrubal Cabrera? Can he equal the numbers he put up last year? Uh, it's possible. I mean, you know, obviously you hit 25 home runs, you put yourself on the map to some extent. You know, there, in certain ways, he can consolidate some of those games, too. We talked about Santana, and he put up the power numbers, but he hit 239 and so forth. Uh, Cabrera wasn't a great on-base guy last year, and a funny thing happens when you start hitting 25 home runs. Pitchers are going to pitch you more carefully, and if you are able, if you are wired that way, you can become more selective. Maybe that means more walks, which can raise, you, raise your on-base, and maybe that means you just get better pitches, pitches to potentially drive if you're willing to be patient, too. So it's in front of them. Like, again, another young guy, we're talking mid-20s, so there's the potential to do as well or maybe even improve, but you know, there's another school of thought that says when you jump from being an okay player to being a great player, there's something called regression to the mean, or Bill James used to call it the whirlpool effect, where the year after you go totally bonkers, sometimes you're going to consolidate a little bit, sometimes you're going to pull back before you take that next leap. So, you know, I don't necessarily think we can predict, oh yeah, Cabrera's going to hit 35 this year. Maybe it's a little pullback, but I think that he's got his skill set to potentially become an impact player for years to come. I think I'm, gl- really cool. I'm glad you recognize our bullpen. I totally agree. I think it's going to be a forte of our, our team. I think our mm-hmm. defense is going to be very solid, too, the, especially because of the addition of, of Cotton. Yeah, Kochman helps at first, certainly. I mean, uh, I wrote a book about the Tampa Bay Rays called The Extra 2%, which came out last year. So it didn't cover Kochman because he signed with the Rays last season, but I subsequently ended up following him very close. And I can tell you that I don't think he's going to hit 306 again, but the guy can pick it. There's no question about that. He's a good defender. That's going to help. You know what I'm interested to see? It's not a, maybe not a huge story locally in Cleveland, certainly not a huge story nationally. I want to see how much Jack Hanahan plays. He's a terrific, like an elite 
gold glove caliber defender. Yes. The problem is you got Lonnie Chisenhall at third base. Lonnie Chisenhall is one of the key players, supposed to be the future of the franchise, and he can hit better than Hanahan. How they split up that playing time will be very interesting to me because with three extreme ground ball pitchers in Jimenez, Masterson, and Lowe, if you get a guy like Hanahan out there, that really creates potentially more outs than you might have had otherwise. Not that Chisenhall is a butcher necessarily, but it changes things. So between those guys, Brantley is certainly for left field is going to be a plus defender. I like Chu as a defender. Yes, I think the defense can be pretty good on this team. Absolutely. We have a lot of viewers that are Tiger fans because as a regional sports network, we go here, there, and everywhere depending on your cable provider. I keep saying to Tiger fans that think automatically they've got it now with the signing of, of uh, Fielder, ah, you got to play defense. We know about Johnny Peralta's lack of range. And I go back, and you know this very well, Jonah. When yeah. Cabrera was with the Marlins and he was younger, he played left field and he played third base. And he was a lot less weight when he played third base, but his range then was limited. Yes. No, there's no question about that. I, the Cabrera move to me is so puzzling at third base. I, I, I laid it out and I wrote up the Tigers preview. If you are in the market and you want to read that one, just click. You know, the archive, you can see right below the Indians one. I wrote Tigers and Indians back to back. And I do have concerns there. I do think that's the best team in the division on paper. But if you look at that defense, it's a concern. And when it comes to Cabrera, I think either Leland is deluding himself or maybe it's some sort of weird thing to appease Victor Martinez, who's going to be out for the whole season but is still under contract for two more years. It's, hey, don't worry, the DH spot is still available for you. Look, we're putting Fielder and Cabrera in the field. Either of those scenarios is, is bad if you're a Tigers fan. It doesn't really make much sense. I would love to see Cabrera DHing or even Fielder DHing one of those guys and put some better gloves out there in the field. Of course, the problem is the Tigers have a weird roster. The next best third baseman is Brandon Inge, who did buck, buck 97 last year. Great defender, right. but he can't hit at all. So it's a weird team. It's sort of, you know, if you ever play fantasy baseball, it's what I would call a stars and scrubs team. You got Verlander, you got Fielder, you got Cabrera. Yeah, a couple other guys that can play, but you got some bad players on that team, too. Certainly a good club. On paper, they should win 90 games, something like that. But if everything absolutely comes together for the Indians, and I mean a big, big season for Santana, big for Ubaldo, big for the bullpen, Cabrera you know, uh, keeps those games and all that, it could very well be a race because the Tigers are going to lose multiple games because of that bad defense. Looking at the rest of the division, you know, Kansas City, you know, picking up uh, uh, Sanchez and Hosmer and Moustakas, uh, nice young uh, uh, sticks. Gordon came into his own. Nobody's looking at the White Sox with the collapse of Dunn and Rios and Burley's gone. Uh, and, and the same thing with the Twins and the health issues surrounding Maurer and particularly Morneau. Yeah, it's a weird division right now. I mean, in the past few years, it's been perceived as kind of a weak division, but for different reasons. The Twins were the class of the division until very, very recently, and these uh, injuries have hurt. And to be quite frank with you, I think the pitching is kind of the untold story. It wasn't that long ago they had Johan Santana dominating. Yeah. Uh, you know, even a guy like Slowey was pitching very well until not that long ago, and now he's off that roster, and of course he's with the Indians now. It's a weird team that's going through some transition, but of course it's, it's not a situation where you want to rebuild in Minnesota necessarily either. You've got a brand new ballpark. Who do you trade? You're not going to trade Joe Maurer, right? I mean, you're sort of in this situation where you have to ride it out and see what happens. So we could be looking at a scenario where the Tigers and Indians are over 500 and the rest of the division plays under. I do like the Royals long term. I think they can contend maybe next year, maybe 2014. Maybe if everything in the universe goes right, they could potentially be pretty good this year. But more likely than not, I think we're looking at two overs and three unders in this division, which votes well for Cleveland and Detroit because potentially they could beat up on those guys. And then if one of those teams gets in the wild card race, let's say Cleveland doesn't win the division, maybe they get fat on their division mates. And maybe they put up, I don't know, I'm making it up, but 87 or 88 or 89 wins. And if there are two wild cards in the American League instead of one, now all of a sudden you could sit there and say, hey, that's not impossible. Let's go to the Boston story, because I find it intriguing that they hired Bobby Valentine with the uh, Beckett and the beer and all that. And of course, is Crawford healthy? That's a big key, too. Yeah, there's no question about it. Crawford's injury was a concern. And, and hey, I mean, he was supposedly healthy last year, and he kind of sucked. I mean, let's be honest. Considering he was making $142 million in year one of that contract, it, it is a concern there, no question about it. But I look at this team on paper. I mean, every expert worth his salt picked the Red Sox to either win the World Series or come close last right, year. And I'm right. not going to deny it. I was one of them. I, I did, too. I did, too. 
you know, how different is this team than that team, really? They've still got those guys. They're still the same guys on the roster. Yet Dice K's out for the year, whatever. Lackey's having TJ. I mean, these were big players in the first place. Still a monster, monster lineup that can hit its weight in, in whatever. Uh, and the top of that rotation, anyway, looks pretty good, especially Buckholz is healthy. Now you got Lester, Buck, Beckett, and Buckholz. That's pretty good. They made steps to uh, fortify the bullpen. They picked up Andrew Bull- Bailey and Mark Melanson to help out in the bullpen. It's a good club. The, the Red Sox could be anything from missing the playoffs again because the Rays and the Yankees play in their division to flat out winning the AL East. I think that they have that kind of capability. They've got that talent. Whatever, beer and fried chicken and this stuff comes along once in a lifetime. I think more, more likely than not, Bobby V will settle it down and they'll be a good club. <laughs> uh, the Yankees uh, did something this year that they didn't do last year. They addressed their starting rotation and uh, getting Kuroda. Uh, how will he do in the American League when he's got to face the mm-hmm. DH, of course, is a question. But Pineda, everybody recognizes his talent. Is Hughes going to make that rotation? Yeah, he might. I mean, I like Freddie. I liked Freddie when they signed. I didn't like. I didn't think Cologne would be as good as he was, but I liked Freddie when they signed him. I thought that he would be a, a useful pitcher on that staff, and he was. And, and I don't see any reason to not use him as an asset. I mean, there are all kinds of things they could do with Hughes. You know, be it a shutdown seventh inning guy to to whatever. And the fact of the matter is, Bruce. When was the last time a starting rotation went through the season and only five guys pitched? It never, ever happened. Right. If you want to talk about the Yankees, the Rays had the scenario, right? Matt Moore is maybe the best pitching prospect on the planet. Who knows if he has a job? I mean, that's how deep that rotation is. But these things work themselves out. You can never – it's the oldest cliche in the book, but you can never, ever, ever have too much starting pitching. Phil Hughes is going to pitch impact innings one way or another this season. And with the addition of Pineda and Kuroda, I mean, certainly the Red Sox and the Rays are good. But on paper, the Yankees have to be the favorites in that division and maybe the favorites to come out of the American League. Obviously, the talk of the winter meetings when it started was what the new Miami Marlins uh, were doing with Reyes and Heath Bell. And- there was so much talk about them getting Pujols as well. Turns out the Angels, by the end of the winter meetings, were the team that made the most impact. But, Jonah, I came on the air and I said, despite getting Pujols, despite getting Wilson, despite having a rotation that also consists of Weaver and Heron and a fervent Santana clicks, I still think Texas is the team to beat. How about you? I totally agree. I love Texas. I think Hugh Darvish is a fantastic pitcher who's going to prove it at the major league level. And I'll tell you something. The rest of that rotation does not get enough acclaim. People look at T.J. Wilson. And before that, of course, Cliff Lee left, and they thought, oh, the rotation is not going to be good. And they are good. Nobody knows about Derek Holland. They're they're on TV. I mean, you're watching them in the World Series. But somehow Derek Holland doesn't get any recognition. And neither does Matt Harrison. I mean, these are good, young, left-handed starters who are only going to get better. That's a deep rotation. It's a deep bullpen. I don't need to tell you about the offense. That's low it up and down. Exactly. My God, what an addition that was to that yeah. team. It's a, it's a great ball club. If you look at the American again, again we're, we're now the, what, the 3rd of February. We still, still, this is like my, my crusade. We still don't know how many wild cards we're going to have this year. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. But let's say we have two. Let's go through the American League for a second. In each of the Yankees, Red Sox, and Rays, I think all three of those teams are going to win 90-plus games. You got the Tigers in the Central. They're probably going to win 90-plus games. Maybe the Indians are in the mix. Maybe they're not. The Rangers are going to win 90-plus games. But you're left with the Angels. Well, how are the Angels making the playoffs with all that stuff? This is a great, great team that could win 92, and maybe they're sitting on the sidelines. This AL this year is incredibly top-heavy with some fantastic superstar laden teams. It's going to be very tough. You're going to see at least one and maybe two very good ball clubs golfing by the time we get to our game. <laughs> In the National League East, all again, all the hype with the uh, Marlins and, and, of course, uh, the most entertaining manager, uh, uh, arguably with Oz there. But, uh, you know, there's question marks health-wise with the pitching of the Atlanta Braves. Can Hayward uh, shake off the sophomore jinx? Ugla's got to get off to a better start. He had a phenomenal second half of the season, heaven knows. But Philly is still the cream of the crop. Well, I'm going to start with the Braves only because I have a, I'm going to go intellectual on you for 10 seconds. Okay, so there's a term. Uh, there's a part of Japan called Okinawa, very beautiful. And in Okinawa, they have a special kind of diet. It's called the Harahachibu diet. What is Harahachibu? It means you eat until you're 80% full, and then you stop no matter what. The Braves are the Harahachibu of Major League Baseball. They build a roster until they're 80% full, and then they stop. And it drives me freaking bonkers. I don't know why they do this. I don't know if it's because they're, you know, Liberty Media, which is the corporate owner refuses to go over a certain dollar amount. I don't know if it's because of, of whatever management, but there's something about this team. They won't 
get that one more player that they need. They're an 85, 86, 87 win ball club for the last few years now since the dynasty ended, but they can't quite make that one more move. And I look at them and I say, well, maybe they'd be a wild card team, but now the Marlins are improved. The Nationals are going to get pretty good yes. pretty soon. Yes. And you still have the Phillies. So it's a weird division. I, I'm, I'm ready to anoint the Braves because I like that pitching. They've got more young pitching coming. I think Hayward does have a bounce back season. I love Brian McCann, one of the underrated players in all right. baseball. But I look at this team and I say 86, 87, you know, and the Phillies might be 90, 91, and the Marlins might be 86, 87, too. So it's that kind of division. I don't think the Phillies are going to necessarily run away and win 100 plus this year because of the Howard injury, because they don't have Oswald, because some of those other guys are a year older. But I think, yeah, and so on paper, at least they have to be considered the best team in the division. Not a super monster team, but at least the best team on paper in the NL. Central division looks weak to me. St. Louis could indeed repeat, even without LaRusa and without Pools. Oh, I totally agree. I love what they did this offseason. If they're not going to sign pool holes, let's go get $26 million. I mean, that's a bargain by today's market. There's no question about it. If he it. can stay healthy, but Jonah. If he can stay healthy, he had a great season last year, Bruce. He was right. probably worth about I don't know, 15 or $20 million on paper last year. He's right. a great player. You talk about David Freeze. If that's a true breakout in the playoffs, now you're dealing with a serious bat. Alan Craig, same story. Big playoff breakout. If, that, if he carries that forward, even though he's got an injury, that's a serious bat. And I love that starting rotation. They lose Pujols. They didn't have Adam Wainwright for ten right, seconds last right. year. Adam Wainwright goes in that rotation with Garcia and Carpenter and all those guys. They're good. Shelby Miller, one of the top five pitching prospects in baseball, he's standing by in case something goes wrong. Very good team. I'll tell you something. You say the division is weak. I would say that it's more split. I like the the, the uh, Cardinals. I think the Reds are very good. They uh, address their pitching needs with Sean Marshall and Ryan Madsen and Matt Latos. That was all very good. And even the Brewers, even without Fielder, maybe Braun suspended 50 games. They got Artis Ramirez, and I really like the pitching staff. The Brewers could be one of the top five run prevention teams in terms of pitching and defense in all of baseball this year. I think that if it's a win, it's not Harvey's wall bangers anymore. It's going to be a team win pitching. Those three teams all have at least some shot in that position. How come the Cubs weren't more active in improving their roster? I don't think it makes sense right now. I think, it, let's say they went after Fielder. So what, do they move up from a 75-win team to an 80-win team? I, I don't think that makes much sense. I think that you have to be a little bit more patient and understand. The only impact player that's on the roster, well, maybe there's two, is Matt Garza, one on the pitching staff, and Starlin Castro. That's about it. So they, they did upgrade the roster in some ways. They got guys like David DeJesus, who are good complementary players. But it doesn't make sense to break the bank at this point. I like, actually, what Jed Hoyer and Theo Epstein are doing. And, heck, the Cubs have waited 100-plus years. Wait two or three more, because some of those prospects will come up. I think they'll make good moves. And, listen, Theo didn't win a World Series year one in Boston either. It takes a little bit of time. It takes a little bit of building. But I like the direction they're going. I, I like the fact not ever, all 30 teams can be aggressive. If there was one team that it made sense to your powder dry for a bit, I actually think the Cubs might have been the, the one. Can Arizona repeat? And, of course, they pick up Cahill to go along with Hudson and uh, Kennedy, uh, uh, but you still have to look at that San Francisco starting rotation. Obviously, I think it's the most wide open division in all of baseball. I moved to Denver a few weeks ago, and nobody's talking about the Colorado Rockies, just like nobody talked about them the first time they won that division or the second time they won that division. I think this is a pretty good club. I think the Rockies could surprise. You have trouble naming three Rockies starting pitchers, but so what? That's always the way with that team. They always have one or two guys you know, and somebody who comes out of nowhere, that's fine. Tulo and Carlos Gonzalez, they're still star players, obviously. They've got good complementary players. I think Dexter Fowler is going to have a nice breakthrough year. I look at that division. I can see the Rockies winning it. I can see the Diamondbacks winning it. And, yeah, I can see the Giants winning it. You want to talk about the Harahachi boo? What are the Giants doing this offseason? Yeah, They've right. got this great pitching. They've got no hitting, and they did not address it. They didn't go out and get Well, but, but the only thing I would say to that, Jonah, if yeah. Melky Cabrera's coming out party last year was any indication, uh, they look upon it that way. Oh. Um. I don't know. He had a great year. He had a great year, Jonah. He, oh, he absolutely had a great year. And you know what? Uh, Joe Charbonneau once had a great year, too. And so did Bob Hamlin and Pat Lissack. That doesn't you mean all me. that much. If we're, going, if we're going way back in the day in Indian history. So, uh, look, Melky's a fine addition. I don't dispute that. I like Gary Brown. He's a pretty good outfield prospect. But, gosh, they could have done something. Shortstop is going to be a black hole. They're going to lose other positions. Their best hope right now is Buster Posey comes back and just becomes an MVP right out of the shoot after that big injury. Because if that happens, then I might have to eat my words, no question. Are we going to see you down in the desert? 
Uh, yeah, I am going to be in the desert. I'm going to be actually talking to Chris Anthony while I'm down there. I'm working on a book about the uh, Montreal Expos, which comes out in a couple of years, and he used to work in that organization. So we've got an interview lined up. I'll be covering them. I'll be covering all the teams, Reds, Angels. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'll be spending a week or two down in uh, Arizona. Very much looking forward. All right. Well, hopefully we can latch up down there. Always a pleasure, Jonah. Thank you, Bruce. Jonah Carey, he writes for Grantland.com. He's one of the best baseball writers in the country.